In the UK, there's a bowl for every surface for the Hensalite product. But overseas, I use the Tiger 2 and I use the Dreamline XG purely because I love the grip and the arc that the bowl takes, and that's what makes me one of the best players in the world. The Morewell Bowling Club is your place for fun and food. Come and try bowls and make new friends. Have coffee or bring the family for lunch or dinner. The Morewell Bowling Club. Visit us today on Hazelwood Road. Anyone thinking about getting a roof, your whole system will change. Right down to social bowls and pennant. At a board meeting this week and approved 22 new players. They really have been perfect all the way through this build and they looked after us really well. Afternoon everybody, welcome back to the Morwell Bowling Club and down to the round of 16 for the mixed pairs for this year's edition of the Hensleye Victorian Open. We have an absolute cracking contest in store for you this afternoon. I recognise this man on the mat here, Scott Biles, he's playing alongside VO Ambassador Natasha Van Eldick. They're up against the Miami Perry of Olivia Cartwright and Peter Campbell and joining me. In commentary this afternoon is none other than Matthew Otobre. Welcome, Matty. Afternoon, Sam. It's going to be a good little game, this one. I've been looking Few forward to faces. commentating with the greatest BV commentator. First time. First time. Wow, what a start from Olivia. Uh, that's quite handy indeed. <laughs> <laughs> no messy about, straight into it. So A little bit of a run here, Sammy. No, he's thinking of the draw early as Scotty Biles. If you're tuning in for the first time for this year's Victorian Open, mixed pairs format, three oh. bowl pairs, playing 15 ends. Of course, any jacks that are going out of bounds are re-spotted on the two metre mark, Matthew. Yep, on the tee. And I don't think we've come close to the time limit of two and a quarter hour, two and a quarter hours just yet. No, I don't think anyone, I was don't saying think that we will, two hours is probably the average time. Correct. I haven't seen any dead ends, to be honest, today. Not many. No. Big Kev hasn't been winding up. No, he hasn't had to. They've been in superb form. Cast they leading have. up, so they're in action on the far rink. The winner of the stream game will take on the winner of the contest over that far rink between Cass Millerick and Big Kevy. Against uh, Danny Simmons there on the far rink from Coringal. And our international guest, uh, Joanna. Joe, yep. Yep. Headspeth, is that right? Sounds good. I'll, t I'll go with it. Sounds pretty good. So this is Peter Campbell, just bold. What's he doing with that one, Sam? Just oh, short. I wonder if we'll see Tash line up early here. It's got to look pretty good from the mat. Here we go. There you go, Matthew. That's half a go as well. Bang. Oh. Man, a good effort to miss the jack there, Matty, and just leave one bowl in the head. I had a couple of that one. Yeah, good result. Killed on the... Two metre mark there, but still one down. And Pete Campbell looked to add to the count. And there are other round of 16 matches on the couple of rink next door to the stream rink. Tristel and Michael Wilson, who were in good form earlier on in the last stream that we saw, Matty. Yep. They're up against Sandy Rowe and Ray Jansen. It's a little trail now, Sammy. Call from Scotty. Just asking for this one to turn back late. Nice to get down. Well, it fell down. That's made it close. Just look, it might only be good enough for second shot. Liv just confirming that we've yeah, they've still got it. So once a mile up, Pete with his last bowl. Looking for a minor correction in speed on this backhand side. Mm -hmm. 
bit under, Sammy. Liv asking for this one to run. What run underneath? Mm -hmm. In the area, well, there you go. Tasha Van Eldu just calling the shot for us. Here we go, forehand, Sammy. Forehand, any jack movement. They've got everything past the head. Maximum result is three. She can get it right. Needs to get down. No, needs to hold on, Matthew. Oh, Scoring you're right. Looks like Scotty Biles just having a look and concedes one down on the opening end. Cracking start with Cartwright. Awesome three bowls, leaning off first end straight into it. And we would have started a little bit earlier if possible, but out on the back green, Matteo, we had an extra end for the first time, well, we've seen here at Morwell, I think. Yeah, and it's the, the oars next door that uh, caused it. They, they came were three out on down top. with one end to go. They came out on top, picked up a three. Colleen Orr added a third with her last bowl. She's on skipping duties and got the game to an extra end. And to be fair, Barry and Colleen, I'm not sure if you saw Matty played a really, really good extra end indeed. There wasn't much for Pitch to play out. He had a dead draw and oh, not a lot of room at all to draw the shot. So. Colin and Barry progress to the round of 16. Down the ring next door to us. Yeah, I had a chat to Barry just before before we came out, and he said, yeah, they were very lucky to get it. Uh, I suppose it's not about giving up. And, and they got it, so they're wrapped. Anthony Witkowski's clocked off early or just not working at all on a Wednesday <laughs> afternoon. Any support for Clayton pairing. I asked Mickey West for his overall predictions for every event earlier on. I still haven't heard back from him, but he's Come on, stream Mickey. watching. So if he could give us something, that would be great. Even just a prediction for the overall mixed pairs, because we're getting down to the business end of things, Matthew. Well, what's your prediction, Sammy? Um... Because we've got another four matches played at Terrelgan today. Cass and Kevin to go all the way. Cass and Kevin. Oh, no. Wow. As you said, Matthew, still one more game here at Morwell this evening. He caught a final action and, as you also mentioned, games going on over at Terrelgan as well. I'm going to go... Strong pairings left, isn't there? I'm going to go Dylan Fisher and Sophie Kersman. Still in, and Brad Pavey, who we saw yesterday afternoon, still going with Barsha Speed from Ocean Grove. They won their couple games this morning. Taking on Bonnie and Todd Trewarn from Melton this afternoon. Can catch up with all the final series draw. And fixtures and a might get a bit of live scoring going from here at Morwell this afternoon as well, Maddie. All through the bulks now up and results portal. All there to see. Natasha is just signalling two there. For Scott. Shaping up to play this on the back end. Nice angle there. We've seen Matty on this stream rink the opening day and a half now we've been here. This side just seems to turn a little bit more. Let's see here, just going to turn and crash the front. Good effort there, Sammy, from Natasha. 
<laughs> That's enough from you, Bordy. Pete Campbell looking to add a metre from his first. Bit of jack would be good. A little bit more than a metre. Yeah, uh, coming into the afternoon already no, from Greg Boyd, it, just it, asking how pies are going this season, Matthew. Well, we'll find out tomorrow night, won't we, Sammy? Okay. I'm sure Rowan Marshall and Maxie King will be in big form. <laughs> 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 you cheeky bugger. Great bowl there from Natasha. Holding three, Sammy. Natasha signaled two on the changeover. Yeah, well, definitely three then, isn't it? Pete with his last bowl here with a yeah. bit of work to do. Liv doesn't mind it. Nice align. Much better bowl here. Doesn't want a gap, no, Matty. No, no gaps. Oh, he's got oh, a piece he's got of the, the jack. jack. He's got it all the way through. Huge oh, turnaround. Might have made a couple himself. He catch that indication from Scotty. He sort of signaled, but... What's well, at least two, maybe three. Back turn to the camera. Huge shot. Ah, huge turnaround that's early a great on. Great bowl for yep. Pete. Jen Delves tuning in. Who's this Van Eldick character? Matthew, never heard of her. <laughs> great to have Tash down for the Vic Open. And they've started well. They had to work hard in their previous game, though, against. Um, who did they play against? Rod Pedersen on the far rink. That's right. <laughs> and Mary Thompson from the USA. Some I knew it was these, a close some game. Some of these games just blend into there one. Was, there's a, always a fair bit happening. They had yeah. to work hard for it, but they got through, and that's all you've got to do. These knockout games. All right, so what can Tash come up with here? A couple down. Play the backhand. This is a tough shot, Matthew. But a Very tough shot. Get a ball, can work off the inside of Pete's last one. Reese to hold. Had the right weight for it as well, just crashing the front, and it'll be two consecutive ends to the moment pairing of Liv Cartwright and Pete Campbell early on. They've kicked two three. out, and it confirms for us it is a three, a six shot turnaround early days. Very handy pickup indeed. Yeah, the moment pairing have started well here on the far rink opposite us, Matthew, Cass and Kevin. They lead 3 0 through the opening two ends as well. How's the battle between Michael Wilson and Ray Jansen? It looks like Ray's got a two on the first end. affected under the dome here too much Matty, but the weather has improved significantly <laughs> from a couple of hours ago well, BV Corflute came flying onto the green just about I'm pretty sure I saw the last game so well protected here though at the Morwell Bowling Club fantastic setup green running around 14 14 and a half very comfortable speed should make for some good bowls Scotty now the line just pulling up short. Live again going in this yeah, direction. No, this is four from four. Oh, now the line again. Just lucky in speed that time around. Great bowl by Scotty. Oh, yeah. Right, that makes it a little bit tricky for Liv. She's got to 
change hands now. Shaping up to first bowl on this forehand side, coming in this direction. Change of hands now for Scotty. And looking to get behind the jack. Oh, what? Yeah, like Wasn't far off crashing into a, a neighbouring bowl, oh, which is well right away on the A wayward bowl on the <laughs> ring next door. Quite sure how that's got there. Be a few bowls scattered around, maybe with a bit of weight. As we change over, there you go, Matthew. Mickey West has just flicked me a message with all his tips for this round. He's going to try and pick eight winners out of eight. All right, see how you go, Mickey. Let's see how he's gone. So over at Chiralgan, he's picked Barsha and Brad Pavey to win through. All right, bit of a given given the Ocean Grove pairing, I'm assuming. He's picked Johnny Curtin, who's still going from Coringle. Team up with AJ Jenkins. j Boy still in. With Carly Morrison there. And no surprise he's picked Sophie Kersman and Dylan Fisher to go through. What about the... As we uh, see, Pete Campbell with his first bowl here. Just trying to pop the shot bolt. Spring the jack into the open. It's fair attempts. Just sliding on by. Comes to a good home. And uh, more well. Stream rink. It's good for the Wamo pairing who have started brightly here. With Cartwright and Peter Campbell. He's did Big Kevy and Cass to get the job done as well. He's tip Mickey Bowman on the ring next door against the against the Oars from Northern Territory. And he's tipped Tristall and Michael Wilson as well to get over senior on Ray Jansen. Let's see how he goes. was tuning into the game before because they were in good form as we touched on. Pete Campbell still just the one down here. Not far away again. Pass the draw, get a close one. More speed just to spring the jack where it's got to go. Another one in a good spot. Fortunate not to sit Pete's last bowl and sort of split the Mimo bowls up and a pass the jack. Pete has to change a whole lot here, Matt. Looking to get under Scotty's bowl. I thought Asked so. If there's a couple catches. I like that way he's playing, just doesn't have to open it right up. Half interested. Yeah. Is it going to get down this time, Matty? No. Just about played. I mean, you can see where they've all finished. And probably nailed that line three times in a row. This hasn't got back to the shot bowl, and Tash with not a lot of room to add. She's had two goes at it, though, Sammy. Let's see what Natasha can do with her third. Nice enough line for it again. Oh, it's a good effort. <laughs> It's a pretty good attempt, and they'll the get board, themselves Sammy. on the board. And I think Tash pretty much signalled that at a shorter length, whether that's Matt up or Matt back. That was up to Scotty to decide. Just brought the Matt up to the top of the line here. Matthew now 
JT's told us all about his how successful his pairs campaign is going to go tomorrow. It kicks <laughs> off at Warrigal. Are you playing any events your time down here? I am. I start my campaign tomorrow at uh, Mafra. Action. Mafra. Yes. Playing alongside? Oh, the, the great man, Lucas Protopappas. The one and only. Yeah, we've had two goes at it, Sammy. Our goal is to get through the section, and uh, we've been very close. Uh, hopefully this year, this will be our year, Sam. And then I've got triples. Uh, next week? Next week, Monday. Alongside? Oh, our CEO, Tony Sherwell. CEO. <laughs> Chief, and Chief Eddie Officer. Another staff member, Glenn Soda. Glenn Soda, Soditis. Yes. Had him on uh, commentary for a bit of our yeah, Prem Reserve he final. Went really well. Did a good job. So I think Tony and I have just said, well, Glenn can skip, he can do all the work, and we'll just uh, have sit back fun. and enjoy the ride. <laughs> <laughs> uh, really looking forward to having a bowl. You, you watch a lot of bowls in these tournaments, and you. Just want to get out there and have a go. What about yourself, Sammy? What are you playing? No, no, commentary duties for me. Oh, right. What would Working you have liked duties? to have played if uh, you could? Anything but singles, I think. <laughs> <laughs> After that performance the other day, the weekend. Uh, you got to yeah. let it go, Sam. No, on to the next one. No, I like the team events, Matty. Yeah. Fun. All right, Liv. A little bit of work to do on this end. Try and get another one in the area for Pete to work with. Just needs to run it out oh, the last little it, yeah. bit. See it just sneak into camera view there. Just Back a little bit looser this end, isn't it? A little bit, and it's been a little bit of a theme. A few games we've streamed coming back in this direction for whatever reason that is. Right, so it might be live with just holding one on the changeover as Tash jumps onto the Mac. Searching up on this backhand side. Representing the Raymond Terrace Jets in New South Wales. And just needs to hold on to get all oh, of the jack has. and goes with it. I don't think she liked it when it came out of the hand. Uh, she didn't. She gave a bit of a hand <laughs> of slight apology. She was miles away. Good shot and chance for Pete now on the forehand. Just to drift under Scotty's ball out to the left of the screen there. Change of hands here, Sam. Any thoughts on that one, Matthew? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, change of hand. What do you reckon? Oh, it's got to be backhand, doesn't it? it? Makes it hard on the forehand now. What a thought so. Try and get to the shot bowl. Bit of a two bowl play. Try and open something up. Can sit yeah. the shot bowl through without getting the jack. Yeah, good call from Liv like that. Play the yard up on the backhand. Get a good view of this on the way in. Needs to run and... Ooh, it has oh, it run. Oh, look at it hold on there. We've <laughs> seen that a couple times yeah. there. There's a little spot just past the seam. Where it does straighten on the back end in that direction. We've seen that a few times yeah, now. I think I saw a couple of Jam Morton's bowls earlier do the same thing. Oh, so Tasha on the forehand just looking for something Some cover. passing to cover. And it's played that pretty well. Hangs on probably a little further than she would have liked, but still value. If 
Pete happens to overplay this. Played pretty solid easy, don't he, Cunny, Matty? Get through the sh couple of shot bowls. Yep. That's what he's signaling to live. Back in. Oh, solid weight here, Matty boy. Just needs to get down. That's Liv's going out and it's no change. It'll be a couple and a few wins in a row here to the pairing of Scotty Piles and Tash Van Eldick. They still trail Liv Cartwright and Peter Campbell. Three shots to four through the opening four ends. And as this end comes to a completion, Scotty Biles brings them out up again. A few scores from Around the grounds, around of 16 contests in the mixed pairs. Kevin Anderson, Cass Millerick, leading 5 0 over the opening four ends. And have a look at that, Matthew. They're wow. In a pretty good, <laughs> pretty commanding position in, in number five as well. Michael Wilson, Ray Jansen locked at three apiece through three. And Colleen Orr and Brad. I was having a chat to some of the uh, middle park boys and they said that Cass just put on a show in the previous round with her leading. Always uh, within a mat. Backhand side, back towards the main clubhouse here at Morwell. Liv Cartwright is locked in early. Cracking starter again. And not a bad response at all. Oh, good Steve response. Yeah, picks up all of the jack on the way through. Gave himself a chance. See so here the camera sort of in behind where the head is. Oh, There's room for the shot to be drawn. Probably looks tricky enough from the mat, but tricky for Scott Piles. He adds another one in. He's just trying to get a view of to how much space he's got to draw the shot. There is still room for it to be drawn, as you can see. Pete Campbell pops his foot out at Jack High to give Liv a bit of a guide. Attempt to manage, just drifted yeah, on was. past, still just a bit not far still away. That angle there, still just down. <laughs> bit of weight from is it Danny Simmons on the firing plane against Kev there? Yeah, about got himself four or out five of trouble. down, and I think reduced the count back to one. He'll take that result. Alright, as good as Liv's last pole was, it does give Tash a bit of a guide, something to sit on. Yeah, don't need oh to sit yes. on it when he can just draw the absolute shot. Probably wants this to fall down now. So He's we'll asking us to do it. Signaling for it to fall in. Just paid a little bit of a shelf to work off.
<laughs> All right, Pete can be nice and positive on the back end here, Manny. Work off the last one of Tash's. Have it a good, good effort. Stays on as well. Another one passed. See on this backhand side. Get out of that fraction too deep. Struggles to get back to the line. looking for something similar to his last just a bowl tight is good enough oh there he goes he's going to fall in the right way oh look at that bulk stand up at that angle <laughs> lucky not to fall back down towards the jack who's got shot there you go scotty ball so the last one's a bowl pass tash can sit it through to make three close to the shot Just be looking to see if she can go a little bit quicker at this and flick the bowl out. Whether that's an option as well, might be a bit easier. Trying to sit it through, we've seen on this hand it is tricky to sit the bowl with a yard or so. Maybe just try and clip it out. Is she going to play Matthew quicker weight or just trying to sit it through? prediction. Yeah, I was unsure. <laughs> I wasn't going with anything there, Sammy. <laughs> safe. Play <it> safe. <laughs> Just don't say anything. Just give me Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> All right, let's have a look. What's she got? Doesn't have to wait for it. Just a draw shot. Well, we'll have a close look here because if they are holding, they won't want to get too close because what are your thoughts, Sammy? Give it away. Have they got one? Uh, horrific, horrific angle for us sitting mm. here to try and call it. Try and get the players sort of guide. Pete going there. Measure over the top of the head. He doesn't really know either. I don't think anyone's too convinced. So whether they're up or whether so they're down. If it if looks they're like down, a, If they're down, Sammy, what, what's Pete playing with his last? I don't know if it's safe or whether it's just a forehand draw mm. if they're up or down. So it seems to be too much danger if he sticks on the backhand side. Liv is, thinks she's got it. Uh, if they've got it, it's definitely a forehand draw to yep. Jack Hyde at another. And a few close looks. No one overly convinced as to what the situation is, but Pete Campbell has last bowl. Have something to say Let's about see if that? He goes with the forehand draw, Sammy. No, lining up backhand, I think. Still up here on the backhand side. Liv looks pretty interested. See the bowl coming to view now. Oh, oh! Wow, what's that done? Turn Tasha's through. Pete's closest one and one down. Liv is signalling. I think it's turned a further past the Jack. Concede one. Scotty keen to have a look for the seconds. <laughs> Liv's right. One down, Sammy. That's three ends in a row. Natasha. Yeah. 
Shoney Hafner in the comments with a few score updates for us over at Traugan as well. Thanks very much, mate. We'll read through those if you want to. Well done, Shane. Go through Matty Yo Tob Yeah, what have we, we got? got Myers versus Fisher. Fisher 10, Myers 2 after five ends. Milan versus Curtin, 9 4 to, to Curtin. Trewan and Pavey, 4 all after five. Yeah, that one will come down to the last end, I reckon. And Jay Boy's just two down against Fraser after five ends. That's 5 3. Mill tip, man. He's Sophie Kersman and Dill Fisher to take it yes, out. That's my tip. Yeah, good start after <laughs> five ends. a real limb for that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, real brave yeah, prediction, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Couple current state representative, oh, former Australian I just someone else because you went, Kev. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, Liv's found it this way for the first time. to jump over onto the backhand side nice and early. Try and beat Scott Piles' Jack High Bowl to the right of the screen. The Scott change as well now. Good call, Emma Tobray. Changes straight over. Look to oh, I think Liv's bowl, bowl forced through. the call. Yeah. No point in Crashing changeover, give yourself a that, chance. That back bowl's great position for Scott. Yeah. We've seen a few times Matty jumping over to this backhand side. Seems a little bit, a little bit tricky. Not sure if it's a fraction slower or no. We've seen people, a few players fall into the trap of sort of Cutting across the head, but also not quite having the weight on a few of those shots. See if Liv can make the correction. Pete's playing himself right in front of the camera. Go to the 45, and Liv touches her own ball on the way through. No longer resting toucher, and there's a few chances now on the side for Tash to sit that ball through or get the jack moving. What would you be playing, Sammy? Backhand or forehand? Um, Considering uh, still Natasha's a right-hander. I'm just probably cheating if you wait to see what hand oh, you they have. play you on just the cheated. mat. Yeah, I'd definitely <laughs> play backhand underneath and sit the ball through. All yeah. right. <laughs> nah, good shot choice there from Tash. That's smart. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you would have gone forehand. That's like me not making a comment before. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's basically <laughs> the same, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I need something behind. Clear call from Scotty. Oh, there you oh, go. Oh, she's clicking onto your go. forehand. Clear call. Tash prefers the forehand option. There you go, Matthew. Nice little port there. Just under lives. Front one out to the left. Search up there. Oh, no, never mind. Back, straight back. No, straight back. To the gave that up. End. Gave that up. Straight to the back to the back end. <laughs> Just wanted to hold on. Try it hard, little slide off the front. Not far enough. Probably looks like there's a bit in the way if you pay Campbell on the mat. You can see there is still room to 
He's, Draw his another last one in on the back end. Down a little bit, yeah, didn't he'll, it? He'll get back there. He has to just fall inside his own. They might be already holding a couple. It was called Pete to sort of draw to the two-metre mark here. If he crashes his own on the way through, he falls in. If he gets a clear road, he splits everything up past the jack. Don't mind that. Mm. Just stays on. Here we go. Forehand. A bit of weight, now to Sammy. The forehand. Rip this ball straight out of the head, Matthew. Cleared the pass. Nice look at Ooh. Oh, missing underneath. So, Cliff and Pete stopped the runner three ends in yeah. a row. No, oh, Pete's still got, still got one to come. Oh, he has two. One to come. <laughs> <laughs> the opposition ran for one three ends in a row. Of course, he's got the last ball. It's the call from Liv. The forehand draw probably could yeah. have played it either hand. He's on the, the way cap. in. Or Liv's bowl. Clear road. Gets Liv's bowl. Well, is not that enough, though. enough or not? No. A little bit unfortunate not to get one or the other. A clear run. He was right. He got Liv's bowl in the middle. Just turned one. up for enough for a multiple. But as you said, Matthew, yeah. just a single. Regain the lead. That way I'm a pairing of Liv Cartwright and Pete Campbell. 5 4 through the opening half dozen ends. Stop that run of three ends in a row. Next door, we've got the pairing of Barry, Barry and Colleen Orr leading Peter Bowman 8 4 after five. Really uh, tight game against Michael Wilson and Ray Jansen. Michael Wilson is leading 5-3 after 5. And Kevin Anderson is leading against Annie Simmons 10-0 after 7. Yeah, another great start from Olivia Cartwright. As you said, Sammy, really finding it that way towards the clubhouse. I'm in the backhand, back on the back direction. Hands. Yep. Liv seems to be only playing the one side of the green. Would that be right, Sam? As a lead? Uh, yes. Yep. <laughs> from Scotty Piles just falling a pole in front of the jack. Good areas. Both leads building up the heads. Nicely, as we'd expect. What's your preference? Three bowls or two walk um, for pairs? Three bowls? Just in terms of speed of game? Yeah, I like it. the only reason. Two, yeah. two walk is, is great for strategy. I'm getting calls from JT who wants to be out of commentary. Out? You're the best. The BV's number one commentator, you know that. Quality game. <laughs> Viewers are flying across Facebook and YouTube. Oh, I know. <laughs> it's our first time together on Comic Show BV TV. It's been great, Sam. JT You've wants done all the work. JT I've just wants to be gone. All right, well, enjoy the rest of this one, Matthew. I'm going to go find a beverage and a seat to watch the rest of it. Okay. Thanks, Sammy. See you later, I Matthew. We've got, uh, we got Gus coming in. Hello, Hello Matty. Gussie. How are you, mate? Welcome back. It goes quickly when you have that little break. Yeah, no, it's it? good. I like the idea yeah. of the five ends. You come Rotate. back all refreshed. A few dimmies. A few dimmies? Very uh, nice. Had one. Had one. Okay. If my wife is listening. Yep. No eggs benedict this morning and a one dimmy today. That's a good start. What have you thought so far of the uh, match? It's pretty oh, tight. Fantastic. Yep. We just keep raising the bar with the games that we've got. Not only here, on the other rinks, I was having a look at some of the other rinks too. There's some the cream is rising to the top. Yep, round of 16. So we've got four games here at Morwell and four games at Terrelgan. 
Do you know the names of the ones that Terrell can hide? Yeah, we've gone through that. All right. We yeah. have the Trewarns playing oh, yeah. uh, Brad Pavey. Oh, wow. That'd be awesome. Uh, we have John Curtin playing Milan from oh, Clayton. Yeah. Wow. He's done well. Yeah. Jay boy of course. Playing uh, Fraser from Mulgrave. I don't know. Fraser. No. No. And they've got Dylan Fisher playing Myers. Oh, the Paul Myers. Paul Myers from Danny Non Club and Annette McCormick. Now, they're rel well, relatively new bowlers, those two. So, I think yeah, great effort to make round of 16. Well, yeah. Oh, Pete Campbell. What a bowl. Actually, it shows you, you know, for any new bowlers listening, that what you can cram into a couple of years and become quite proficient and, and mix it. They've, those two have put themselves out against the best and learnt from the best, and they're showing uh, reaping the wards. Who do you think's starring here? Is it just an even performance? Well, Liv's been leading really well. She has. Scott's uh, now starting to match it. Um, it's, it's a really even match, Gus. I saw th the, uh, Olivia's three opening bowls were... Yeah. You know. <laughs> and then Natasha was forced to drive. Yeah. yeah. It was a thrilling in to start off with. Liv likes this, Gus. Yeah, it's on a good, uh, it's on a good line. It's a Has it got the weight? Nope. Oh, close. And then it falls out. So we've got the winner of this match, Gus, to play the winner of uh, Kevin Anderson and Danny Simmons. It's going the way of Kev at the moment, 12 zip after eight. I was watching some of their games today. They seem to get out to a big lead and then just autopilot. Well, it helps when you've got Cass at the front. Uh, just she's just been there all day. <laughs> dropping. Look, in that perfect spot, I just saw one of their balls being rolled in. They play on carpet. They sleep on carpet. They love it. So the steamers hold, that black bowl holds the shot. This stage, just the one. Just the one. Looking to add another, just a bit wide. Can get caught out there. Well, if Natasha can get this jack, Gus, it's going to be a big bowl. She's had two goes at it already. No, not happy with the line. We've seen it many times today, just getting underneath the line and it just, just falls away. So that's another one to Pete Campbell and Olivia Cartwright. Puts the lead to 6-4 after seven ends. Just keeping their noses in front. It's got warmer in here now, the yeah, sun's the, out. the weather has definitely changed. I think we've got a good stretch now, yep. Gus, after after 23s, today. 23s, 24s. Yeah, that's beautiful. Nice. Considering all the rain we had last year. I saw a thrilling game when I was off uh, a tie between Brett Mahoney and the Oars, Colleen. And yeah, Sammy and Barry. I were talking about the, uh, the extra end. Didn't quite go to plan. They gave the mat away. We're talking about the strategy. Gave the mat away so they could have last bowl. Barry so they rolls, won the toss, obviously. They won the toss. Yep. Barry rolls his length and put one about, you know, eight inches short. You know, and then you're chasing from then on. Yeah, it's an interesting uh, discussion, that one, whether you uh, keep the mat or you give it away. Obviously, you're going to have last bowl if you give it away. But you're giving Barry a chance to get on. 
Well, I was discuss- discussing pennant ties and what should you do you don't, if, you, if you win the mat at toss, you get the last bowls. So your skips can have the last four bowls of the game, maybe. It happened to us on Tuesday, <laughs> pennant in Division 1. We tied it with Bandura again, All right. third time in two years. And um, their front ends put them on, and we didn't recover. Yeah, I think they went on to, to get beaten by Middle Park in the final in the division final. That's a tough competition that Tuesday. Yeah, isn't it? <coughs> Scotty looking to improve on his first. We've got some scores from Matty Flapper out at Terrelgan. Thanks, Matt. By Norris and Fraser, seven all. Trewan, five, Pavey, six. Milan, eight, Curtin, nine. And Fisher, 11, Myers, five. Nothing in any of those games. Could go anyway. Thanks, Matty. Thanks, Matt. Good leading here again, Gus, by Olivia. Yeah. Really knows the role of a lead. And then at times, has great discussion with Pete about shot selection. She actually started off going down on her backhand and she changed, she went around the clock with her at the first two ends, but she switched to a more S- traditional... And she stayed on the one side, yep. Yep, and, and because she sprayed her, her second end around and I think they probably had a bit of a chat saying, I think we stick to one side here, yep. make it easier. Well, it just means you're looking at that one, one line the whole time. Yep. Yeah, I think on this green you've just got to commit to a to a side if you can, if you've got the luxury as a lead. Great bowl next door by Peter Bowman. He was four down there, Gus. Wow. Drawn shot. He's made Colleen go and walk up. <laughs> Colleen doesn't look too impressed. <laughs> She's ball. like, how did he do that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, I see it. It's Pete funny. Campbell that looking to join the party with Olivia. Oh, great effort. Yep, that's probably in. Well, there's a bit of room. Yeah, Natasha looking to draw a shot here on her forehand. Just got to trickle yeah, through. Just about a, over a mat over. It's funny to see Colleen and Barry, you know, come down from Darwin and come here and they support all these tournaments we play. How would you go playing in that Darwin? many games in, with your wife? <laughs> How would that go for your marriage? Yeah. Well, I've got history there with, with Laura. We, we, we normally blow up after about the fourth end. Yeah. So you only play in the shortened version of the game. <laughs> Sets play. <laughs> Good bowl here. That's that mixes it up a little bit. Wow. There's still a, there's still a gap. I mean, yeah. It's still Natasha asking for a foot now to yeah. see that. Jack High. You don't see the foot enough in bowls. The foot's another bowl on the head. Just kind of try and draw to where his foot is standing. Scotty's foot is. Has, he's looking. standing in the way. It's just got to oh. stop. It's got to stop and fall in. Yeah, great there you ball. Go. On cue. But you, you'd agree that that, next, that foot is just demonstrates if there was a bowl sitting here saying beat that bowl. We were trying to work out Peter's age. I know we shouldn't talk about age on. on uh, but I was just looking at Pete thinking he's a pretty fit looking fella and uh, I'm just glad that he's just not going to be eligible for the over 60s right but close so he's pretty good isn't he I don't like to talk age on the live stream we can we can with the guys I don't think the guys mind as much Pete looking to take Natasha's ball out it's an ageless ageless sport oh it's Sport for everyone, Gus. That's right. I was at Mafra yesterday and saw an 11 year old boy. Yep. Uh, can't remember the name. I think mm-hmm. it's Hilia. A country kid, or. I'm not going to go with anything because I don't know my right. information, but uh, yeah, 
Looked like he's very new to the sport and was having a having a ball. Fantastic. Actually played against uh, JR. Did JR get through his section? No, he didn't. I didn't. I saw he didn't. <laughs> I wonder how that game went for him. JR would always look for the talent in the youth. There we go. Tyler Hillier. Ah, yeah, I know that name. From Denny. I'm pretty sure his sister was playing as well on another rink with uh, her dad. Thanks, Naomi Cartwright, for the information. That's uh, end eight gone, Gus. Six five. This could be one of our shorter ends, Gus. Yep. She was very specific about wanting a change in length. She even came up to look beyond our commentary position just to make sure that where he was putting it on the line and said, I'll trust you. <laughs> I loved it. Just a but little bit over minimum. But when you're changing down a length in a tight game, it's so important you get it right. Don't want no miss rolls of kiddies there. How's Scotty? Has he oh, got he on? started well here. Just needs to work a touch. It will. Uh, Not. Now let's see how Olivia adjusts to this shorter length. She's got a good line. And she's given the ball a good chance. That's a nice home to start with. Good change up. Close again. It's going to end up in a great home. Yeah, good leading here from Scott Bowles. Mm. Olivia looking to take a mat off her last. Early call. It's working all right. Just got to run. Probably needs a mat. It's probably the most common spot for them to finish, isn't it? Just that couple of feet. Smooth delivery from yeah. Scott, isn't it? Nice. Well honed. <laughs> Yells from Michael Wilson next door to get him out. I think he was talking about Ray's bowl. Yeah. <laughs> but there's a bit of um, five all. That's a, there's a bit yeah, in that it's game. Tight clash. Leave your cart right. A little bit wider. Yeah. Reasonable position for her. So you see the shorter length just adjusting their lines has been a bit of the yeah. critical. But for the Van Elk rig, they're probably thinking, well, this is just giving us a little bit more room. Maybe... Trying to throw Olivia off her game because she's been very, very tight. Oh, great ball here. Natasha. Oh. Super bowl. Probably makes she slayed those important bowls last couple ends. Probably nearly three she's made. <laughs> Just going to make your opponent, she's going to make Peter work all the way. Yours holding a couple next door, Gus. That's four they've taken out. Three. Three. Okay. Puts them to 14 to five after eight. They look to be well on their way. Pete Campbell just got it. Gets Olivia's bowl up. He was stiff not to hit that in the middle, really.
She wouldn't mind just getting between these Ashton two bowls. Looking to get on her own bowl. Oh, just around it. Yeah, that's in. Mm. Not sure, Gus. Mm. The front, the front act turquoise could be second. If it's not, they're yeah, looking. You've got Pete's one as well. That's yeah, in contention. There. Yep. I think Natasha's last bowl beats, beats Pete. I'm not. Ray Jansen won that end over there that Wilson was trying to get his bowl out. He obviously didn't quite get it out enough. Oh no, Ray Jansen didn't. It's Trish leading. He did get it out. So I'm not sure what it was. We will find out. Okay, change of hands here for Natasha. And Eldick. So she's trying. Victorian trying. Open ambassador. Yes. We've got a few great ambassadors working with us. One from New Zealand. Selena, Selena Goddard. Nice addition. So she needs to beat Pete's Black Bowl out there. Oh, they're looking about trying to get onto the jack. Right. Here it comes. It's just going to fall short. A nice crowd that's built up. Yeah, I noticed really that nice. before. Yeah. You sort of look around and go, oh, there's a fair few people in. Well, that's probably because of the format, Gus, where you have sectional yep. on day one and knock out the day two. Yep. So if you've been knocked out, you come and support or you go and play a supporter event, which is happening at the moment at Newbra. And that was four, Newborough. I believe. Uh, 50 or 60 people. Yes. Yep. Yep. They're keen. Stool and still putting them playing that that lead role. She a goes. Bit of a discussion there about two four two in the Vic Open. What do you think, Gus? Canadian pairs. I like it. I like two four two, but giving someone's made the comment four bowls in a row. Is, yeah, uh, giving someone four bowls is a big advantage. I think three's a lot too, but three's okay. Well, it might have to be a separate event, just a two four two. The comp. good thing. About the good thing about 242 is it's a different person having the four bowls each time. Right. And just a one, let's see here, Gus. They're going to look at Olivia's front bowl first, I think. So we're going to find out if those back ones are in or not. There's only one. Oh. Oh. He's, he's saying two now. Yeah. now. Olivia will get down. Yeah, it must be very tight. Dead end next door, Gus. I'm pretty sure that's Peter Bowman. Just uh, came in and knocked the jack to the side. But as you know, no dead end, so respot on the tee. Do you use the term dead end when it's a respot? Um, it's a kill dent. Yeah, no. okay. Yeah. It's yeah. not dead. No, <laughs> it's still going. What did we get? I didn't see. I was watching that kill. I think we've got a, a two out of that. For Natasha and mm -hmm. Scott. A very valuable multiple. And again, that similar length. Tasha questioning the uh, if it's minimum. Scott stepping it out. <laughs> it certainly looks um, a length.
Well, we've got the tight one, Gus. Seven, six. On nine. After nine. I don't know, four and five. Wilson Jansen, seven. But we've got that one as well. We've got them all covered. Uh, Kevin. Kevin and Cass are looking <laughs> like they're going to be meeting the winner of this of match. This game. Not saying it's over yet, but it's 18 1 after 11. Okay, so the outside two and the inside two meet. Another good start by the leads. Scotty seems to be finding his range yeah, really, body, yeah. really well. Yeah, as we said at the start, Olivia really jumped on quick. Mm -hmm. And Scott's been able to match Olivia now. Yep. And Natasha playing a couple really important bowls. Scores are now 7-6 in their way. A few people on the socials discussing formats, Gus. Yep. Bordy saying whatever it is, <laughs> some, people, some people won't like it. Yeah. I think two walk, just going to be too slow in this, in the Vic Open. Yeah. Close. Got it. Yeah. I don't know. We're, we're mucking around with things, but you don't want to over-engineer things. Um, the game's still a good game, whatever you're playing. Uh, but you've got to do it. You, you restrict it by time. That's always a consideration. I, th I think there's three bowls and then just one walk, just one changeover is good. It's good for TV. You're right, Noel. It is uh, a little bit cold today. But I think we're... we're I don't want to put a moz on it, but I think we're going to hit some really good weather, Gus, and showcase uh, these amazing host clubs. Michael Wilson seems to be running a bit, so it's, it, and it's Ray Jansen's bowl on the kitty again. So Ray's like, well, if you can get rid of it, I'm going to put them there, and if you can get rid of them, go for it. Did you? What did you make last year in the triples with Ray? Last eight. Last eight. Lost, Great effort. I think lost by one or two in that. So. And you're going again? Yeah, yep. Yeah, yeah, we've got uh, Chris Chris Ward from Terrellgood we're playing with. He was great. He, we never played with him before. He was great. Great player down here. Plays in their district and does some of the... I think he's on the board down here. Or I'm playing yeah. against him tomorrow. Oh, right. <laughs> against Wardy. Do you want intel? Oh, yes, please. He's a good bowler. <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that'll, that'll change my game plan. Yeah, just play well. <laughs> you might have a chance. <laughs> All right. Pete Campbell looking to cut this down. Mm. Do you like it? I don't mind it. Tends to get down from it's there. Just got to get down there because Kitty is slightly off the line. Yep. Is Lucas jumping on the socials? I'm playing with Lucas tomorrow, so he's. Uh... Is that right at home, Lucas? <laughs> I saw his um, posts, and he does a great job for sending, spreading the message. Giving away his bags and spreading the word for another great sponsor of the sport. Supporter. I'm hoping uh, Lucas just puts me in an armchair, to be honest. He can do that. Oh, he's been leading well this year. Yep, he's playing really well. Reserve. Oh, that got a little bit of a walk. The walks aren't as severe if you've got draw weight, though, on this. Like, it does take a bit off them. She 
She's close. Natasha is she very is close. She is very close. Yeah, that's yeah. a great bowl. Geez, you love watching a bowl, don't you? Just perfection. It looked like it had perfect weight yeah. on it. Yeah. What's Pete do? Play a little bit more? Just make sure of it. Well, yeah. Jack through is going to be yeah. a great result. Just doesn't want to get stuck out there. It's not going to no, get he... stuck. It might have the jack. <laughs> well, nothing for white, I suppose, but... Two? Mm. Oh, we're going to be having a look for three. <laughs> I think Olivia might think it's three. She's hoping... That it's not. It is. Yeah. Okay. That's a, a three ends in a, a row. Little, little little mini break. Yeah. Um, that's the end of me, Gus. I'm out of the uh, and commentary me. I'm, bus. I'm and you. Too. We've been both given the heave ho. <laughs> See you later, guys. See you next next game. Yeah, can't wait for the next one. Thanks, mate. Was a double tap out there. It was uh, I am joined in the commentary box. Bowls Victoria CEO Tony Sherwell. Afternoon, JT. Afternoon, everybody. What a match to come into. Yeah, last two ends been well, last three ends they've won a row, but a two and a three, and uh, for for Scotty Bowles and Natasha Van Elwick. Swung the game in their favour and now leading 10 6. Yeah, Scotty Biles just started to really find it the last few ends, hasn't yep. he? Yep. Nice little opening year, too. Well, when they got the one, they've they made a significant tactical change in terms of the map. Matt right up, yep. Jack on the tee, because I, I even heard Tash say, We've got to do something totally different. Yep. So, and then he's kind of come into it a bit himself now. So, I know how good Scotty Biles can bowl. He probably was playing below what he normally would. Yeah, he's certainly turned it around now, though. And, of course, we all are aware of what Tash can do. Some scores across the green. I don't know how well uh, Maddie and uh, Gus did that, but next door, Barry and Collie and all are leading 14-6 after nine ends. Um, Michael Wilson's playing Ray Jansen, and that is currently 8-6 in favour of Ray Michael Wilson. It's been a really tight match. Some good viewing down here if you're in the area. And uh, over in that far rink, the one we, we, I said to Kevy, we put the riffraff furthest away from possible. They're already shaking hands. And oh, Kevin yeah, yeah. Cassa find that game quite convincingly. I think they would be 18-4 and didn't have to play the last two ends. Yeah, Cass was very good. Kevy was very good, unfortunately for their opponents. Danny Simmons rink, a tough one to get through. A shout out to Shane Hafner too, who's putting in some scores from the matches at Trelgan as well. So Paul Myers, uh, six trading, trailing Dylan Fisher, 16. They played 11 ends. Milan Prosenica, 13 10 over Johnny Curtin. Todd Trawarn, six, trailing Brad Pavey, 11. And J. Boy Norris, 11, leading Fraser, 7. I made my prediction last game, Tone, as who I think is going to win the mixed pairs. You did. Have you, you got to go out in the limb and make a prediction? or I don't think I could go against who you're tipping, which is, of course, Cass Miller and Kevin Anderson. They've been a devastating touch. I did tell them after the... Tried, in between, to, the, tried to put the moz on. No, well, they reckon that's what I did, but, hey, look, it hasn't, hasn't backfired yet, so... No, if anything, it's increased their ability. Wouldn't you're very kind, mate. It's uh, nice to be here in the market. i tell you what. It's nice to be undercover here at Morwell. We've had some beautiful weather. Today it's turned. We've had a little bit of rain, but we're under the cover here at Morwell. And it is picture perfect here. Kind of sheltered from the wind. And a uh, nice little green surface. Very conducive to good bowls. Compact heads. Can't ask for too much more, JT. No, nah, fantastic facility. And uh, it's great. We're you know, well supported by the Trobe City Council here for the Victorian Open 2024. And some bowls called Eagle Law. I mean, you only got to look on the rink we're on. Tash, one of the best players in the world over the past 10 or so years. 
She's been doing it for a while. I think she played for Australia at age 17, 18, roundabouts. Yep. Multiple time world champion, Commonwealth Games gold medalist. Lives in Port Macquarie, plays out of Newcastle at Raymond Terrace. A couple of hours down the road. Very strong club, Raymond Terrace, won the... Oh, yeah, not wrong. No, nah, men's grade one pennant there, I think, the last time it was run. Yeah, you know, Jason got, Stokes, Matty Bowes, Lee Schreiner. A uh, host of talent there. Ian Lean. I think uh, Omar might have even played for him that particular season too. Oh, he may have that season back yep. at Marylands now, but uh, yeah, could well have done. And a uh, nice setup too. They've also got a roofed green. Uh, very strong club up in the Newcastle area. Strong female contingent too with Jen Delves and um, Kate Matthews. Uh, I reckon Molly Wilt might have even been there at one stage too from memory, but don't quote me on that. And, of course, the other side of this, JT, is don't sleep on Pete Campbell, former <laughs> state representative. Correct. And Liv Cartwright, of course, the current state representative. At a very strong club themselves in the Moama bowling club, the, the Moama Steamers. The mighty Moama Steamers, Absolutely. A liver's urgent Pete's bowl on there. I'm trying to work out who's holding. I reckon so Liv's just got one over well, Scotty Bowles. Well, I was going to say Scotty Bowles, but the bowl was shot. Yeah. JT, if there's ever a chance where I say one thing and you say the other, I'll back your judgment every time. But I reckon this time. The camera angles will always give you that weird perception I tone. Know, you know? I know, I know. But so I get so confident all the time and then I end up wrong. Look, if. But I think I've got you this time. Well, if Tash. Does what she wants to do and turns it over once, it won't make any difference. Correct. And then we'll just have to pretend I was right. Yeah. Just cutting a little bit here. No change. Kim, we're just looking to split these back two bowls of Scotty Bowles. Again, no change. Yeah, if she turns the shorter bowl over or just scoots past and gets a jack, it could make two or three here. Yeah, correct. If she's a touch narrow, it's not a problem at all. Touch wide's probably not the end of the world either. To just sit on Scotty Biles' bowl. And she's not far away. Place. Ooh. Far away at all. Yeah, it's a good question. Uh, we certainly need more in Metro Melbourne. The southeast corner is relatively well catered for. Chadston just appearing. Clayton not too far away. Caulfield Park uh, not too far away as well. Southeast corner is well and truly catered for. But uh, not too much in the rest of Metro. Deer Park will start their build at some stage this year. Sunbury's the other one. Sunbury, a little bit out of the Metro, but probably just. You'd probably almost call it Metro these days. We've kind of built up all the way to Gisborne. If they play Metropolitan and Pettit, so... I yeah, certainly need something in the northeast, north, and another facility in the west, though, which part of something we're working on, trying to get some injection of cash from government to be able to afford to put some roofs right across the state. But again, just a little light on for you, that Your prediction might be right, because that was a very timid shot. If they were down, I don't think that shot would have been as timid. Yep. Let's, uh, let's mark this down, 3.47pm. Hang on. It's, the measures come out, though, Tone. T. Sherwell was right. Well, you said I might be right. Well, funny enough, Tash has already put one on the Campbell score, too. There you go. She knows. She's got good eyes, Tash. I think the actual closest to the Scotty Bowles bowls was moved, so I think we can take this one to the bank. Yep, Liv Cartwright grabs the mat. 
Ah, thank you very much, Paul. I did forget about that. We're already looking to get a roof soon too, which would be good. Of course, there is some plans afoot in a couple of other clubs uh, across the metro area. Regionally, there's a few gaps, uh, most notably up in the far northeast. Bendigo, most places out west, we sort of go from Warrnambool to Kumiala as being the north and south points of the west, and there's nothing in between. Correct. Ballarat's as close as we get out that way. So, Stewie, you're spot on. I even used that same analogy yesterday about Tony. Stewie, having a whack at me. It's the first time I've been right. Let me have a little bit of glory, Stu. <laughs> yeah, Ocean Grove uh, down on the Ballerine Peninsula. Looking at getting a roof down there too. So some very strong clubs looking to provide some roof facilities. And uh, Liv and Pete going back to where they were playing earlier. The map back a bit and the jack a bit more forward. Down the rink. Still anyone's game, this one, JT. Three Absolutely. Shots. There hasn't been much separated the match, full stop. Afternoon, Choco. Hope you're well, mate. Yeah, Wodonga would be a nice spot for a roof. Not one uh, in the whole area, including both Albury and Wodonga. Of course, Albury. Not one in the Ovens of Murray, full stop. Uh, no, Shepparton's kind of the closest, isn't yeah. it? And Chuka. Or Moema, I should say. Colac has uh, certainly got a roof now, spot on. Nice facility, too, there by the lake. The uh, Horsham, Warwick, Nabil, Ararat, Stall sort of area that's lacking. Lacking a little bit at this stage. So. Another one we haven't mentioned yet is Barham. Yeah, well, Barham, not only do they have one roof, they're going to have two. Correct. Uh, I think by September or thereabouts. They're hopefully, year, yeah. So. And it is a beautiful facility up there. Portland getting a roof and two new greens finished in July. Thank you, Chris Fleming. Great for that area. Of course, Warrnambool has two undercover, so getting a couple at Portland. The way to go. It's kind of amazing Bendigo is such a strong bowling area, and they do have great climate, great grass greens, but to not have a roof there is a bit of a travesty. Correct. As Scotty comes down, is he going to keep running? Yeah, good effort, but just a touch shy. It was, of course, going to be a uh, Commonwealth Games event in Bendigo, which may have injected a bit of money in, but unfortunately cancelled. Subject of a couple of newspaper articles today. Mm -hmm. Makes for interesting reading. Correct. Hopefully the wash-up from that is that Bendigo can get, the Bendigo area can get a facility, and ideally it comes with a roof as well. the key in that area, JT, is make sure the roof doesn't shade the nice grass greens. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Charlie, singles start on Saturday. One of our current under-18 state players, Charlie Boswood, yep. from Kyabram. Yeah, sectional matches Saturday, knockouts on Sunday through till around the semi-final, quarter-final stage. Play the remainder of the finals in the last two days here at the Vic Open for 2024. Proudly brought to you by Henselot. Be your best with the world's best bowl. A little bit all around it here, JT. No one really hammering the jack. Find a little bit on this surface. There's a little wall of front bowls. So, is Pete There's tight? Another one here. He doesn't want to be tight under Scotty's. He's not. He just passed it. Does the job. It's better for them. It's at least two, if not three. Dash has got a, uh, a veritable wall of bowls to work through.
It's actually not bad. Still three, JT. Yeah. Campbell's going to come down and have a quite closer look. And while Peter's doing that, I was also going to give a bit of a shout out to Bless Coaching with Barry Lester. He's uh, got on board and supported the Vic Open and uh, in return will promote his coaching business. He's a uh, pretty enthusiastic Baz, as you know, Tone. We've uh, both worked with him over the years and uh, obviously competed at the highest level. Um, he's got a vast knowledge in the game and uh, if anyone's interested, and I've seen it firsthand, if you uh, want to get some coaching out there, because I've seen him run four sessions in two days in the Wimmer and it was fantastic and well received. So... Um, he does do that very, very well. There's no doubt he's got tremendous passion for the sport and loves the idea of helping others grow their game. You go to www.barrylester.com.au and or barry at blessedcoaching.com.au. Pete Campbell just looking for a bit of protection out the back here, holding a number. Wants to make sure he's got something covering those back three. Just not sure the angles are lined up, though, in terms of Tash having to want to, um, wanting to run at it. She's going to try and draw it on the back end. Scotty Bowles just said you can't blast up there because you can't get them all. This is just going... Backhand trying to come through. Very similar line to her last. Touch tighter. One goes. Could have got oh, the so third shot though. Turtled a little bit, didn't it? Well, put the tape on it and find out. David Keenan, that's a fair point, and I think, uh, unfortunately, there's a little bit of truth to that. It can be difficult in safe seats. It's a fair last bowl up by Tashes in the end, because it was probably three down. It's got it back to one. It just took a little, once it connected that front bowl, took a little swivel, it tends, fell back in. Do you know what it tends? That type of bowl where you hit one and screw forward tends to happen on carpet greens more than anywhere else. So, we've played 12. It's only two of the difference. Anybody's game. Um, the other two matches are probably reasonably one-sided at the moment that are on this green. Um, the Wilson versus Jansen mat has a gap. It's now 13-6 after 11. And they were level for mm. a long, long time. Yeah. So. And then All versus Bowman, or is 16-8 up after 11. So, they've probably got score. And if I look over on that head of the Wilson versus Jansen match... They're all whitish bowls around the jack, which is all Triss and Michaels. Great to be back down here for the Vic Open 2024. After our first year last year, JT, JT, there's a real buzz around the place today. Well, again, obviously, those who were didn't get through to the knockout stage, you know, come and had a bit of a look. There's uh, definitely a lot more people watching today. Yep. Um, obviously, nobody wants to get knocked out, but yep. when they do, they can come along. We've got our supporter events too during the event. That was really popular this year. 30-odd entries out there at uh, Newborough. In not the best of weather conditions, but uh, people still love to get a game of bowls. So well done to all of those volunteers who are helping put this event on. And of course, Destination Gippsland, La Trobe City Council. Also want to give our Saturday night party a plug, Tone. Yes. Um, we've got $30 a ticket, live music. Um, we have our ambassadors there who are going to do a bit of a Q&A. Um, questions coming out of the the box or from the, from the, the, the attendees, I guess. And... Um, we also got the chance of the Mega Bowl. It's going to happen that night as well. That'll be good fun. Lovely bowl from Scotty Biles. Holding two now. So it's here at Morwell, and you can uh, get your tickets via our Bowls Victoria Facebook page. Uh, Danny, I don't think so. I mean, it's obviously got to have some impact, but 12% growth 
for the Vic Open this year. So $100,000 up for grabs. Uh, a lot of people love to try and win some prize money, but a lot of people like to come just for the atmosphere and the party. Get to catch up with some close friends and acquaintances. You get to have some great matches and meet some new people. Of course, you can duck into the trade stands. Hensolight has a great stand there, and of course, AM Sportswear. There's all the clothing, club gear you could possibly want. So great fun down here at Morwell. Of course, we'll stream from Terrelgan for the next few days. Morwell yesterday and today. I've got a feeling Tash may have just uh, called Scotty Boss Custard Arm. <laughs> <laughs> I've not got a feeling. I know what I saw. <laughs> Very much with a smile on her face. I think Scotty may have called himself Custard Arm first. And Tash agreed. <laughs> All played in good spirits. Afternoon, Brendan. Hope you're well. One of our most probably loyal viewers. Yeah, Always loves a shout out. And why wouldn't you when you've got the talent that we have on offer on our streams? Just looking at the nec next match, JT. Well, you know, we've got Cass Miller and Kevin Anderson through on one side. As you say, the other two matches look like it'll be Barry and Colleen all winning. And potentially, well, still a bit of life left in the other one. Potentially, Tristan and Michael Wilson. I think there's another score to go on that to the Wilson. Uh, right. Team. So. And then, of course, the winner here provides a good result either way. So, Jimmy will be crunching the numbers and working out who needs to play who. In which match we stream. Of course, Kevin Anderson will play the winner of this match. And the winner of Colleen Orr and uh, Michael Wilson, if they hang on to their current leads, they'll play each other. Easy. Tash Van Eldick. Pete's awfully close here. Yeah, he can oh. sit on the Scotty Biles bowl. It's good enough. Oh, it may not be. It's close for second shot. No, I think. Not quite. Wouldn't we? Lived shorter bowl might be the one that could be roundabouts. You're having an off day, JT. Oh, I've never seen this before in my life. Surely that's two, isn't it? I don't know. <laughs> now, interesting enough, JT, when Pete Cam was just about to bowl that, there was a drive on the rink next door. Mm -hmm. Do you pull out of a shot and wait? For that to happen so it doesn't have a bowl spray on your rink or anything or you just play through it well, it's focus. funny because i've always made the statement that a girl could be doing a cartwheel naked behind the ground i wouldn't see him do it but i think the drive though if it's coming towards you as you're in the mat i think you sometimes see yep. that you know so i thought pete campbell might have just put i mean he might have been just early enough that it was no real impact but watch this last bowl from tash and then we'll answer your question angela Getting him out very, very smooth at the moment, Tash. She's awfully close here. Just got to get her out a little bit more. Just needs a bit more steam. Good friend Karen Evans giving me a dig on the yeah, comments. So she, so she should. 
She's a good egg, Karen Evans. I'll remember that one, Karen. Don't you worry. Now that she's given you a dig, she's even better in my estimations. It was two to Scotty Bowles, Tesh Van Elnick. I didn't say it wasn't two. I just no, wasn't sure which one the closest did. one was. You said it with your eyes. <laughs> I know what I saw. You're getting old, Tane. I'm not getting old. I got it right. <laughs> I'm already old, actually. I can't get much older. All right. Uh, thank you, Shane Hafner. We appreciate you putting the uh, scores in from Trelgan. Some 15 minutes from here. Uh, so Dylan Fisher's rink beat Paul Myers. Uh, Milan Prasenica has beaten John Curtin. Uh, gee, the Toron uh, Pavey match has got real close. 10-11 to Pavey, 13 ends gone. And the Norris fraser match, 12 all after 13. So we appreciate that. Uh, Timmy Hancock, no, we're streaming from uh, Trelgan tomorrow, so we switch it around, and this will partly answer your question, Angela Johnson. The, uh, where the Vic Open will be held depends um, on agreements with local government, so at the moment we have a five-year deal with Destination Gippsland and uh, the City of Trobe City Council. This is year two of five. And uh, we use, well, anywhere up to 20 um, venues across the area. So I think this year we've got about 17 or 18 venues in action. Our two main hosts um, and great supporters of Bowls Victoria are Morwell and Trelgan. Of course, we use a bunch of other clubs, um, given the popularity of the event. Sarah Roger asking, is Tash the pick to win the singles? I think there was a period there a few years back where she was the best singles player in the country quite comfortably. Kelsey Cottrell's probably edged her out in the last year or two. Yeah, it'd be hard to pick against her, but we've also got some quality lady players in the lady singles, haven't we? Certainly do. Cass Millerick is one who springs to mind straight away. Last year's winner, Jenny Miller. Can she go back to back? Happy to hear anyone else's picks in the comments, though. Looks like uh, Trish Doolan and Michael Wilson have won. Okay. And looks like Barry and Colleen all have won. So that'll be one of the quarterfinals here from Morwell. Wilson v. Orr. Other quarterfinal will be Anderson versus the winner of this match. Then it's a good question. I'll go out on a limb. Um, and say that I don't think there is anything that says you have to, but I could well be wrong, and I'm happy to be wrong. Once the ball's delivered, what would it matter? Yeah, look, I just... As long as you're obviously out of the way by the time the ball... Sometimes, gets as you know, there's laws that probably don't make a bit of sense at times too, Tone. True. You know, this so... Um, yeah. All right, look, the one thing with anything to do with laws, I, what I normally say to people is, let me check the law book and I'll pull it out. You know, I don't yep. actually have one right near me at the moment, so I don't, I don't want to give the wrong answer on that one. Yep. Uh, Timmy Fraser saying Sammy Atkinson. That's a fair pick too. She's been in red hot form of late. Selena Goddard. Or Cass. Stewie's sort of got his foot in both camps there. He has. He has. Selena, of course, a New Zealand champion, and uh, over here playing the Vic Open, having a way over time. And Ange, we can't wait to see you next year. Andrew Cullen also saying Sammy Atkinson, so a little bit of love for Sammy Atkinson. She's certainly been in very good form. She won a region singles title the other day, I think I've seen on Facebook. Correct. Now for Yarra region. So Timmy. That's her first one. I think she might have won a couple this year at least. Timmy, uh, is there a particular level of bowler to play in the Vic Open? No, that's the great thing about the Vic Open. Anybody can come and play in it. So nice no matter the ability, ball. and you might, you know... Uh, Depends on how your perspective is, but some people like the idea of, geez, I might enter the Vic Open and I might play against a Tash Van Eldick or a Matty Flapper, for example. So yep. anybody can play anybody. Same as what the Australian Open's like. So. Yep, spot on. It's one of the best things about it, JT. And if we look at our straw poll of two here, 
You've got JT, who's won a Commonwealth Games gold medal and Australian Open pairs and a host of state titles and everything else. You could come up against him or you could be fortunate to come up against me, who uh, sometimes doesn't know which direction to bowl. I'd love to come up against you, Tone. I'm sure you would. As would anyone. I make <laughs> everyone's day when I play against them. All remember, part of the service. Remember when I first started working for BA and we had our induction camp and uh, you actually used to get the ball away pretty well then, Tone, but not so much now. No, that was about 15 kilos ago. You know, I struggle to get my uh, arm around my belly, but it's a work in progress. You probably need to get some blessed coaching, Tone. I do, I do. Tell you who doesn't, that's Tash Van <laughs> Just had a... That is spot ball. on too, Timmy. Any average player can win on their day. That's uh, the fantastic thing about our sport. It, uh, mm. We've seen some, uh, you know, people probably on paper who shouldn't win and go out and win and, you know. It's a good comment from Greg Boyd too. That is the way you learn. And, yeah, you may, might be on the wrong side of a scoreline every now and again. But if you've got the opportunity to play against Tash Van Elric or Kevin Anderson or Alex Marshall... Mark Case, whoever it is, you are going to learn so much as to how they do it. And I, the other thing I can tell you is very few of them are going to be anything other than respectful and, and understand that they're playing against somebody who may not have the same level of experience or talent. Big bowl here from Pete. They're four down on the scorecard. They're two down at the head. Big bowl here. I think he's tight. He's tight. Two. So, what's that? Six a difference. One to play. It's probably a... Uh, you're saying there's a chance, JT. <laughs> I see, when everyone says that, you say there's a chance, I still keep thinking of Dumb and Dumber. That's what I said. <laughs> you're correct. <laughs> so, you're telling me there's a chance? <laughs> I have seen Stranger Things. I, uh, I do know of many, many years ago there was a... T uh, it's like a State Falls. They were seven out playing the last end. I wasn't involved in this game. just watching as a young kid, watching, and they got eight to win, <laughs> win the match. Uh, it defies belief, doesn't it? But uh, I'll tell you what, Scotty Biles has put the pressure on from the outset. Cartwright needs everything behind, really. So. Yep. I think Scotty be looking to pass his own now. Yeah, there's no prizes for sure for either team, really. It's yep. probably even better. That's a cracker. Flat Tip the other out. one over. Yep. Some pairs action tomorrow, JT. Yes, should be good. Where are you playing at? Warrigal. Warrigal, uh, nice. You and uh, some up and comer you've got as your pairs partner, Bradley Orr. Former Vic Open medal winner. He is. Back when he was skinny. <laughs> he's not listening. He's no, I hope he is. Car. I hope he's listening. <laughs> he, will, he will belt you when he turns up. <laughs> he's about twice the size of you. Be careful. Can't belt someone. He's got. To, he's going to carry him to Maritain, you know. So maybe you'll wait till after the game. <laughs> so Liv Cartwright, while well, doesn't hold shot, she's probably got second prize by making sure she's got everything behind. Certainly mm. dialed in her line. So there are three of them there. <laughs> and it's Johnson, who's just privileged. She has the best coach. Her dad made me confident and a better bowler. Outstanding. It's awesome. Props to your dad for that. Nick Boyd's a good mate of mine from over Shepherd and Tatruway, so he knows exactly what I'm talking about when it comes to Ori. I think we better just put your microphone on mute before you get yourself in real trouble. 
What does Tash do here, JT? Is she just oh, trying she's to probably try to finish, the bowls yeah, of, and finish that side of the line, I reckon. Yep. Something to cover all of the different options. Yeah. Unfortunately, when you're Pete Campbell, you're looking at this going, what do I do? Of course, there's no dead ends here in the uh, Vic Open. I thought Jack I saw a comment, then it spot. disappeared. I'm not sure why, but I reckon it was Brad Campbell. And uh, I thought he'd come up and said, put all six of them, up, five of them the tee, then try and <laughs> bang it out. Yeah. And... Yeah, I thought I saw the same thing, but it did disappear. So. And some of these these comments towards my teammate tomorrow are a reflection of some of the comments he's put on some of the chat, the, yeah, the, see, the streams the last couple of days. Him and my brother have been... He and your, and he, your brother have really had a good time. Now, Pete Campbell is a heck of a bowler. He does have a task in front of him. It's close. And this is how you start it. Opens it up slightly. Unfortunately. You know what I... Uh, the I did not that jack back. <laughs> you only have to bang one of the bowls off the green and they can't get the six anymore either too, Tone. That's it. It's two games in this last end, isn't there? There's what Pete Campbell and Liv Cartwright are trying to do. Got an opposition team trying to do a different game plan. <laughs> Tash having a good bit of fun here. There's one of my Murray Downs teammates jumping in now and giving me some stick. <laughs> kind of like this. I reckon we should have a stream once where there's no poles on and everyone just gives you stick. <laughs> There'd be, there'd be heaps of people lined up to do it. Yeah, there's people trying to square the ledger from many years. But Campbell getting one in behind. Leave <laughs> 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 car ride just says you're making this hard for yourself. He's got one bowl to count. You should just try and run up the jack, JT. I still don't know where they're getting the six from at the moment. No, Not with Pete's bowl, just shy of Jack High. Well, just Jack High, that one's... Yep. How do you get Jack movement and the bowl moving at the same time? It's near impossible. Yep. It's not looking easy at all. <laughs> Tash trying to talk the bowl into turning. The only other thing, if you split the jack in half. <laughs> it's declared a dead end. No, I thought that rule, because I saw it Ryan best to do it once in the Australian Open, and so it's the only time you can get a dead end in a non-dead end game. I'm not sure. I'm not sure Pete's thinking about that. No, I don't think the chances of that are great. I do recall a broken window here last year. From a jack that went flying. Correct. I've also seen when someone split the jack before and said, oh, let's just get the thicker part and that's where we're playing to. <laughs> Depending on where it lies. <laughs> yeah. I think it was based on that person's bowls on the head. So six shots, the difference. Six shots on offer on this last end. One bowl to come from Pete Campbell. Cartwright giving a little clap of encouragement. Oh, they've worked out what shot, and that is to have a run at it. Oh, there's movement galore, <laughs> but unfortunately, no real change. Two shots. And so, our winners of this match and into the quarterfinals uh, Scotty Biles and Natasha Van Aldick. Sets us up for a, a nice couple of matches here at Morwell. That'll be Scotty Viles, Tash Van Eldick up against Cass Millerick and Kevin Anderson. And the other half of the draw, if you like, will be Tris and Michael Wilson up against Barry and Colleen Orr. So 
Look Thanks. forward to those. Of course, we'll stream that here uh, from the Henselite Victorian Open. Mixed pairs. Quarterfinal matches will take place very soon. Thank you, JT. Thanks, Tone. Thank you very much for producing the show. And uh, we look forward to seeing you again soon. See you, guys. For me, using Henselite products is, is great. I really love the XG. The Arc is wonderful, I think, because I'm really able to read my weight off the Arc, and uh, it's, yeah, really reliable bowl. The Morwell Bowling Club is your place for fun and food. Come and try bowls and make new friends. Have coffee or bring the family for lunch or dinner. The Morwell Bowling Club. Visit us today on Hazelwood Road. Anyone thinking about getting a roof, your whole system will change. Right down to social bowls and pennant. At a board meeting this week and approved 22 new players. They really have been perfect all the way through this build and they've looked after us really well.